So we discussed capillarity in the previous video and now we will be looking at ascent formula in this video and we will arrive at an equation uh, for the height through which this water rises in uh, relation with the surface tension of water. So I have taken this uh, example of water in this container and let's say there is a capillarity tube of course uh, an exaggerated big drawing to help us draw various forces over here actually capillary will be extremely extremely small. So let us say we have water inside this uh, particular vessel and we have inserted a capillary inside this tube. Obviously water is going to rise over here but here I have shown that water is at the same level and then we will be looking at various forces which act on water and therefore it rises up. To begin with let us identify a few things. Let us say surface tension of water. Surface tension per unit length is equal to T. Let us say the angle of contact is equal to theta. So we looked at this. Let us say radius is equal to R. Radius of the tube is R of this capillary. Uh, therefore, we can say that circumference of the tube will be 2 pi r and we will also use volume of a cylinder which is pi r square h. Okay, so let us come back over here. So we have this water inside this tube and initially it slates at this level and the forces which come into play are the surface tension force. Now, one thing we clearly know in this case is that this meniscus is when you are looking at it from this direction, but this meniscus is across the entire periphery, the entire circumference. So, I can show that circumference with a dotted line. So, whatever we discuss over here will be happening across the entire circumference. Let us focus our attention on this particular point and whatever happens over here will apply to the entire circumference. So, if you look at this particular location, the water is in contact with glass over here and the force of surface tension is T per unit length over here. So that force of surface tension will act inwards. So the direction in which the force will act would be tangent at this particular point. So this is the force which acts and this angle is angle of contact theta. So this is the force of surface tension acting or applied by water onto the tube. By due to third law of motion, the tube will also apply an equal and opposite force at the same location so I will have an equal and opposite force T. This was T, this was T. I am assuming both the lengths are approximately equal. Now this particular force can be broken up into its components. Let us say the component over here is this and the component over here is So these are the two components of this force T. This is theta, so this will be theta. Now this is T and this is theta, so the adjacent side will be, this will be T cos theta and this component, the horizontal component would be T sin theta. As I said earlier, whatever is happening over here will happen along the entire periphery. So if I look at T sin theta over here, at all locations we will have T sin theta acting in this direction. But what will happen is that if this T sin theta at this point or this molecule of water over here in this direction, for this molecule we will have T sin theta acting in this direction. If I have for this molecule T sin theta acting in this direction, I will have a di diametrically opposite point where T sin theta will be acting in this direction. And all these T sin thetas will cancel out each other. So there is no net force acting in the plane of this meniscus, in the, in the horizontal plane, because all these T sin thetas are cancelling out each other. But that is not the case with T cos theta. T cos theta acting over in this vertical direction, here also on this point a vertical direction, so on and so forth. So we will have T cos theta acting along the entire circumference at all the points. And therefore, I can write that total force acting in the upward direction. That means the total force which is acting in the upward direction on the meniscus to lift it up will be the t cos theta t cos theta into the entire circumference 2 pi r 
So this is the total force acting on the meniscus over here along this entire circumference and trying to take it up. Now due to this force the water will rise, this water column will rise up to a height h. Let us say this is the height h. Let us say it goes up to this particular height. Now how is this height decided? The height is decided in such a way that this particular force is able to balance the weight of this liquid column which has risen. So this lifts it to a height such that the weight of this liquid column should be equal to this upward force. So now I can get an equation for the weight of the liquid column, weight of the liquid column of height h that will be mg because weight is equal to mg now mass is volume into density into g is equal to volume of this liquid column this is a cylindrical liquid column as you can see this is a circular thing so this is a cylinder and the volume of a cylinder is pi r square h pi r square h into density into g obviously this and these are equal therefore i get equation t cos theta is equal to t cos theta into 2 pi r is equal to pi r square h rho g pi pi will get cancelled 1 r will get cancelled so i'll get 2 t cos theta is equal to h r rho g and i can write this equation as t is equal to h r rho g upon 2 cos theta and this equation is known as the ascent formula so this gives me the surface tension of the liquid if i know h and if i know those values over here the radius of the tube the density of the liquid and ang angle of contact then i can find out the surface tension if the liquid is water for water theta is equal to zero so this will become one and therefore the equation will take the form h r rho g upon two so this is the SN formula specifically for water. So we have obtained an SN formula for water. Uh, what we will do in a short video immediately following this would be take up various cases of uh, the position of this tube. What would happen if the 